Hi everyone, welcome back. It's Christy. Today is Monday, um, January 3rd, 2022. Can you believe it's 2022? Um, I wanted to start uh, January off by going back um, and covering some basics. Um, I'd like to revisit a couple of my old videos, possibly. Um, I have a couple of videos in the beginning that um, I thought I was making it um, cover all the bases by putting them in multiple uh, playlists and it, <laughs> it comes out that it's quite confusing that way so I am going to be cleaning up my playlists um, and just keeping everything uh, by the journal name and not necessarily um, by the pieces that I'm, you know, so like if I'm doing a cover, I would tag it as a cover playlist and then people are like, well, where's the rest of the journal? Well, it's in multiple playlists. I mean, they all have their own, um, but it's a little redundant. So I'm going to clean, I'm going to work on cleaning that up. Um, I did get my, um, Christmas present that I told you about. Um, I bought myself a brother scan and cut. Um, SDX 85 it doesn't come with as many patterns but it works brilliantly and um, this morning I downloaded the canvas I like that you don't have to have the computer connected to it like the Cricut um, that's one of the main reasons I never use my Cricut um, I have to pull it out I have to take it in the other room so that I have place because my desk here I do not, unless I clear off the whole entire desk, um, I don't have room to put my Cricut and my laptop um, side by side to work that way. Um, I like having the option that I can do it, but it works wirelessly so I can have my scan and cut on the kitchen counter and I have my laptop on the table or whatever. Um, it cuts uh, fine. I don't have to worry about the depth. I don't have to worry about the pressure or how many times it cuts. It's all automated, and I, and I love it. Um, I don't have room to bring it up here to show it to you because it pretty much takes up this whole entire space. Uh, it's a larger than I thought it was going to be. Um, you know, YouTube videos can be a little deceiving at times. But anyway, I'm having a blast with that. Um, I, I highly recommend it. I haven't figured out all the ins and outs of it, but I was able to cut out... Um, a little bit of ephemera. I, it needs to be calibrated, which is a big word that just means it needs to have the lining cut up. I mean, um, you can see that it's, well, I don't know if you can even see that, but it's slightly wider on this side than it is on that side, and that can be cleared up with the calibration. But I need white cardstock for that, and I don't have any 12 by 12 white cardstock. I don't buy a lot of plain cardstock. But um, I, I figure at the end of a lot of things, I'll be able to go ahead and cut out the remaining ephemera and keep it uh, by me to be able to use it better. So here's what I'd like to do for, uh, for today. I want to work on a couple of manila envelope uh, journals. I'm going to be working on three because I like to do things in sets of three. Um, but I'm only going to be working on one with you guys. And I have this, uh, the, well, this is two, two things here. I have, where's the top? This is the, uh, what is it called? Um, this is the back page of it. I had issues with uh, stickiness on this pad of paper when I got it home. So I tore this, or I took this, which goes in this packet and comes in its own envelope. And it's basically an ephemera pack. Um, it has, let's see, it says it came with 10 scrapbook pages, one cardstock sticker sheet, one cardstock alphabet sticker sheet, and one 3D embellishment uh, sticker sheet. So we have, uh, these are the alphabet, of course, and it's kind of like a burlap which is great. Um, here are the other, see you can see everything, everything wants to stick. I don't know why everything was so sticky in this collection, but yeah, see I just ripped a little, oh, maybe not. It's a little bit of glue. Um, 
but everything was really stuck together. So let me take this out of the plastic. I really thought this was fun. And of course, I, I get this at Hobby Lobby. Um, this is Paper Studio, and I got it when everything was 50% off. So right now, I think these are three bucks. Um, not sure about the farmhouse, but some of them. So this one has a little foam tape on the back. I usually don't use that, but I may. So I'm not going to take it off yet. Life is better in the country. There's a, a windmill gather farm fresh with the little sheep and chicken. There is a uh, milk can with some cotton balls in it and um, a little wreath that says, hey y'all, which I thought was fun. And then these are the other cardstock stickers. I don't know if you can, you're probably getting a glare on that, but there we go. Okay. And then the, my dog is freaking out. I apologize, but I have to stop and let him out. Um, today is my husband's day off. The dog belongs to him. And if dad is in the house, he is exclusive to dad. Well, dad just went to take his car for an oil change, and the dog is not having it. So he doesn't want to stay in here with me. He thinks dad's still out there. Anyway, so we've got some plaid, 12 by 12. We've got some... This is brick. There again, it's still sticking together. There's the cotton and some wood, white wood, whitewashed wood, and then we have a green and white stripe. So that's what all of this and the cardstock stickers and the three dimensional stickers came in the ephemera. So we'll be using that later, and that's what this page is from. But this cover had so much sticky stuff that I decided to use this piece of paper. Um, but this, this is the farmhouse um, collection, and um, I'll go through here. It's stuck on the bottom, too. I don't understand. Oh, I know what. And you can gross you can see the hair. Um, <laughs> it This tape. It's just so sticky. I put baby powder on it and it just, it didn't help. So I put the paper on top here. So, but let me show you the designs. We've got kind of a geometric. There's three of each. There's more of the white washed wood. It's kind of a, like a cement with a little bit of rust there. Let me see if I can get this so you can see it more. There's a, more plaid. There are some, um, fern and a wide stripe and I, I love this texture on the stripe that's the same as the plaid and it's kind of a, a linen or um, it could be burlap but a really uh, open weave and so then we've got this parquetry or marquetry depending on if it's on the wall or floor um, these look like little crosses uh, let's see there's my, I might use one of these for the cover. Silverware. I love this. This does not have, you know, really a lot to do with farmhouse. You could use this for anything. And I love it how it's set on the black. This was a marble. And another different geometric, looks like tile. And more cotton on the whitewashed wood. The stripe looks like pillow ticking and this one is really cool because it's got all of these it's like hand woven uh, fibers really cool and another geometric and a polka dot tiny polka dot with the green another geometric some more cotton on a blue background and then that's, yeah, that's, that's it. So that's what I'm going to use for this collection. So let's get started. That was kind of a long introduction. So what I'd like to do first is close the envelope. And this isn't sticky. Um, well, it is sticky, but I wanted the whole thing to be sticky, so... My hands aren't working very well today because our heater is out. 
of course. It's going to be clear this week, no rain, but that also means it's going to be colder. We're going to, our high, and thank goodness I don't live in Canada or something, but um, our high in Fresno this week is going to be like 50 something. And um, yeah, that's cold for us. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and fold this in half. And you could cover this with anything. For this style of journal, this is my favorite style of journal. Now, I usually do these in the larger size. These envelopes are 9 by 6. I usually use the 9 by 12 to make my full-size journal. So this is going to be a, a, a mini, so it's half size. It will finish at 4.5 by 6. And... I just want to put that mark in there and then I want to put something along here just as an extra reinforcement. Now normally what I would put there is Tyvek and here it is. I use these Tyvek wristbands because they are pretty much all I need. They come a hundred in a pack. I want to say it's like seven dollars and um, they last me for quite a bit. So let's clip off that. And I am going to use my Fabri-Tac to glue this down. And I'm just going to glue it right in the middle. That's why I folded it so I can see where it goes. I'm not going to go all the way. Well, actually, it doesn't matter because I'm doing it before the wrap. Um, I'm going to go mostly to the top and down. Smooth that. And then I'll flip this over and trim that off. Now this will work for a 9x6 um, journal as well because these are, um, well, 6, 7, 8, 9 to the little perforated part. This is where you would peel this part off and stick it together. Um, but I'm not going to save that part. I can't keep everything. Alright, so that'll just give me some extra reinforcement when I'm sewing in my, my signatures. Okay. And I got that mostly centered. I did pretty good. I do want to make sure that this is um, nice and dry, but we will be covering this. All right, so let's get our, let's choose our paper that we want. Anyone have any preferences? I'm thinking something, because it's a mini, I'm thinking of something with a smaller uh, design. And something that's not so uh, a stripe, I'm going to have to line up. Um, so something that's random. Although, yeah, let's do this. Let's use this one. Alright, so I want to leave about an inch on two sides. <clears throat> So I'm just going to go ahead and glue this. <coughs> Excuse me. My glue is really, really having a hard time with the cold. Anyway, so as far as the heater, I think we may have a cracked heat exchanger, which is very dangerous. So our heater is completely off. Um, it started emitting marshmallow smells. And... Um, yeah, the danger of carbon monoxide is there, so we have turned it off, and thank goodness we live where we do, so we don't have to be, I mean, we can, we can wrap up in blankets. We do have a gas fireplace in our living room, which we use in the, in the evening, and um, I'm just going to put this on here. So anyway, the guy can't come till Friday afternoon, which is kind of a drag. But, you know, everybody's having issues, and they're backed up, and they're short workers, and, you know, it's the same thing everywhere. So, we wait. I can, I can be without heat. 
we went <laughs> a while back we went for like two years where we didn't have any heat because it wasn't under our warranty some of the stuff that needed to be fixed and you know we don't have that many cold days um, we, we'll have 80 degrees in November sometimes so the heater doesn't start kicking on really until the end of December or the first part of January I'm going to use my ruler um, to cut this off with my knife but you could use your scissors and there again I just want about an inch around the envelope but I can see by the ruler that I'm not I'm not straight in where I put the envelope anyway but that's okay close enough that's why I didn't want something that had a um, you know like a plaid because I would have to really be careful if that was the case I would probably measure a line where I wanted to place um, the envelope okay so I'm starting a scrap pile over here I'm gonna put that with my embellishments now the next thing I want to do is trim off an eighth of an inch away from the corners um, I'm not trying to be condescending or anything I just I want the people that are new to my channel or beginners to be able to um, know what we're talking about anyway eighth of an inch away because we want to be able to wrap that corner <clears throat> without um, without showing the envelope underneath now if by some chance you get too close to the corner and it's not an eighth of an inch and that corner wants to show take these pieces you cut off and glue them down right on the corner and then when you fold this over it will be less noticeable I mean you could probably notice it if you got right up close but um, okay so next thing we want to do is I like to score and if I score right along the edge here it's just gonna help me uh, and the paper know where I want to fold it you don't have to score it hard it's just what it'll do is break down just a little bit of the fibers um, not break it down but well yeah I guess it does uh, the top layer so that it'll bend easier and it just gives it you can't really see it from this side because I didn't do it that thick but it tells it tells this where to go and that's just a little easier okay so now that we've told this where we want it to go we're gonna fold fold it in now I'm gonna go ahead and glue this down I'm gonna do the long sides first I mean yeah, let's do the long sides first. You can use any kind of glue. I'm using Beacon 3-in-1 in my Sugar Bell bottle, and the reason for that is I like the size of the tip. I don't have a lot of issues with it coming out of the top and I don't have the wrinkling of the paper that I would get with a water-based glue like tacky glue or school glue all right they have these little bottles of glue at Dollar Tree which is now Dollar 25 tree um, foam and poster board adhesive this works great I think it's a conspiracy personally I don't know um, it seems like all of these glues from Beacon are very similar. I'm sure they have different formulas and that's why um, they're branded differently. But as far as I'm concerned for what I do, they're interchangeable. Okay, now we've gotten to the sides and 
we want to take that, remember that eighth of an inch we left? This is what's going to cover the corner. We're going to press it down. Now, if it, it's going to be hard to see, but there's a little part that crosses over. And if this was a thicker chipboard or something, it would be more evident. Um, this is not really a th thick, we're talking maybe one millimeter, but I'm just going to press that down on the end, just like that. I'm kind of flattening this part that's on here against the envelope and down. And what that does is it's going to help me fold this over so I get a nice tight corner. And like I said, it's more evident if you're doing um, a chipboard or something with an envelope. It's kind of flat, but it will still help give you a nice corner. I'll do the same thing here. I guess I should check my time. I've got seven minutes. That's going to be just about right. I like to keep these videos about a half an hour. Okay. I'm just going to come down the side here. And fold that over. Okay. So there we go. I think the cotton goes this way. And let's put a liner. I think I want to use this for the liner and I'm going to use my my cutter so let's where's my ruler let's measure this it, we know it's going to be six tall so I think I'm going to do five and three quarters and then this is four and a half so I'm going to do four and a quarter by five and three quarters okay four and a quarter by five and three quarter so four and a quarter. Let's see if this blade still cuts. Oh, goodness. I don't know what's wrong with this blade. Let me, um, let me take this one out and use this. I'm going to mark it as my... Watch me run out of time right when I'm near the end. There again, my fingers aren't working. Mark that one as my chipboard blade. I have a new set here. These are the triple track style I that I use in this Fiskars. Kind of hard to find sometimes. Try to do this without cutting myself. Even though there's plastic, it can be done. And if there's a way, I'm going to find it. All right, that way I can use the plastic on the other one. And let's get that in there. All right, I'm going to try again and use that for something else. So we want four and a quarter. Yeah, that blade. Doing multiple journals, you can really rip through a blade like butter now. Okay, so four and a quarter, and we want I have to open this. Yes, I cut upside down. I want to do five and three quarter and five and three quarter. It's going to leave me with a half an inch. Okay. And we want to glue that to the inside. About the same all the way around. You have a little bit of wiggle room with with the uh, Beacon 3-in-1. I'm not using Fabri-Tac. This is 3-in-1. 3-in-1 is a little bit cheaper. And we'll line 
this one up. There we go. Now we're going to need a piece to go over that center. And I think I'm just going to use this piece and cut that at five and three quarters tall. This is the strip we had from the front. It's not really going to show, but we do want to have that finished piece. And then I'm going to leave it um, open to dry. And, and that'll be it for our cover. So next time we will choose papers and go on from there. So I thank you for watching. Make sure I get this cotton in the right direction. And I will see you next time. Bye now.